Uh, welcome to the Phantom Zone. Three fans, one podcast, and a sea of comics. I'm Noah. Kayla. Jared. <laughs> we are doing our Shazam movie review today. Super excited mm-hmm. to do this. Shazam. <laughs> to do this review. Um, before we get into it, we will do the news, like always. Um, so in, wait, uh, wait. You didn't say it. What? News flash. I'm like, every time I have to say news I flash. feel like that's a big thing. <laughs> I mean, every time you also say welcome to the Phantom Zone, and then you mm-hmm. have us ha- say our names. <laughs> say it say newsflash an infinite mass punch of current events way too long that's perfectly okay good. so in suicide squad news because <laughs> it seems like every week something new is coming out about this fucking movie deadshot is removed from the movie so Idris alba is going was everybody thought he was going to be replacing will smith as deadshot mm-hmm. but apparently the character is just taken out i like that better I they, do too. They haven't said who it's going to be? No. I. That'll as, be next week. <laughs> as, yeah. As multiple people have seen on Twitter, I've posted about it. I hope he's Bronze Tiger. I think that would Me be too. a really good addition to the team, and it's completely new. Yep. I mean, they need more characters. Also, I'm a big fan of them not recasting people. Same. I like this. So if they're not going to have Will Smith in it to play that character- Have just a different character. Recast. Yeah, just have a new character. There's plenty of people- of color that are in comics that need representation. Yeah. And start the disagreements now. <laughs> With you? Yeah, I don't know. You disagree I, on this point? I do. Two things. Uh-huh. I want Deadshot in a Suicide Squad movie. It's like not having Captain mm-hmm. America in an Avengers film. Which will be probably happening very soon. I'll never let it happen. <laughs> Hear me now, Personally. Marvel. <laughs> no, but I really I just think it's a bad idea. Also, uh, um, I'm fine with re- recasts, personally. personally. Oh, yeah, I, I just mean, think it's, it's annoying when everyone else is the same, but that person is... I think there's a certain point when recasts are fine, mm-hmm. but with it being a sequel and this soon after the first one, it's just... Even though the but movie we don't, was, we don't know if it's going to be a hard reboot yet, do we? You said this last time. It is a hard reboot. Okay, so then... From what they said. <laughs> then I'm fine with recasts. But, it, but it's also weird that they're still keeping some of those characters. So it's like, it's a weird that is reboot, weird. not reboot type thing. Mm-hmm. Totally so weird. anyway, yeah. We'll see who he's going to play. Enough with the. I don't want to keep talking about Suicide Squad. <laughs> you brought different, it up. <laughs> I know, but different news. Come on. <laughs> also, I agree. I don't know why we keep, like, keep talking about this news. It's like talking about like Weekend of Bernie's 4 or something like that. Like, the first one wasn't that good. But... It's not my fault that You're this right. is all the news that's coming out. You're right. Um, the Russo brothers have said that they would come back to do specific Marvel events. Hell yeah. And one, I think it was MTV News. They were doing an interview, and they said that they would come back to do Secret Wars. <laughs> okay. Storyline. I'm down. I guess we have to see what happens after Endgame. But That's what I'm... Yeah. I'm assuming that some of these pivotal characters that are in Secret Wars either haven't been introduced yet or aren't going to be here. Yeah, because the principle you could do without those specific characters, just the idea of like a bunch of uh, good guys and bad guys randomly dropped off in Battle World. Yeah. That's a doable thing. It is, but if they do this whole... like focusing on other new characters so like the eternals and sure. all these other characters it's just going to be like okay these I aren't guess. the headliners yeah it's just like okay drop the eternals there and like ant-man <laughs> and then have like Ronan in there as well you are, <laughs> you, are, you are selling a movie to me right now i'll tell you right now i'm, I'm just i love and ant-man's just there <laughs> he's yeah, yeah. the only hero the rest are villains mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a very short movie <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's all the news I have today. <laughs> yep, that's it. Man. All that's, right. There's so, so we much news. Yeah. Get into Shazam now, though. <laughs> yes. All right. So, did I you did guys, it. did you see it? <sighs> no, I didn't. I only watched the trailer over and over for two hours. <laughs> that <laughs> makes the whole movie. You pretended. I pretended to watch it. <laughs> um, I think the best. So, how do you guys feel like it stacked up to the comic book? So, the interpretations. Was it a good interpretation of the character? Did they do the characters right? That's a good question, though. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> really, I don't think it's ever going to be better than this from a pure translation standpoint. Mm-hmm. I really don't know. You guys can disagree or whatever, but I, I'll let you disagree. But <laughs> I just thought, it, I mean, it's, it's like that uh, Jeff Johns 2011 Shazam series. Not exactly beat for beat, but they, everything was just so. Yeah, if like, you take right. out Black Adam's whole storyline, yeah, it's pretty much essentially the 2011. Yes, 
Yeah. With the added seven realms from the current run. Yeah, they kind of made, uh, what do you call it, Black Adam, Savannah's, like, they just compressed those two stories. Yeah, essentially. But, you know. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, just the visual sort of appeal, the tone, yeah, I thought it was, the translation to me is perfect. Yeah, I think, I, I agree. I think that they hit on every beat. I really liked that they delved into his parents' history a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, Billy Batson's because you don't really get to see that too much, yeah. especially in the comics. It's just he's an orphan. He's going through foster care. His parents are dead or blah, 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 whatever. And I like how there was closure with that. I thought that was a really interesting yeah, mm. origin thing yeah. that they don't really have in the comics. So. In general, I think the interpretation was great because that's it's exactly what I wanted from a Shazam movie mm-hmm. um, in terms of just like page to screen adaptations i think savannah could have been anyone like that's not reminiscent of the comic book character at all in my opinion sure. and i feel like that character that we saw in the movie called savannah worked with what the film was trying to do and all the yeah. themes that they were trying to address so i think his storyline worked in the movie it just it could have been named anybody like that it, is that is a really good point like they could have just had somebody that was talked to by the wizard that decided yeah, to Yeah, but because it's a revenge. comic book, it's like, let's pull from characters yeah. they already know. So well, they made it Savannah. And again, I'm like, that character worked well with what they were trying to do. Mm-hmm. Yay. Also, I, also. I have to say, when you did the deep dive... Also, listen to our Shazam deep dive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when you did the deep dive, you do this long history of Savannah. And, but recently, he has been tremendously subdued. And sort of almost, when you did that deep dive, I was like, man, I really wish he kind of was still... This flamboyant, ridiculous character. Yeah. Well, at least, I mean, I you can't tell that he's unintelligent in the movie, yeah, but yeah. like he's brilliant in yes. the comics, and I don't feel like that came across at all. Okay. Yeah, he has just this like legion of, I'm assuming, scientists yeah, yeah. that yeah, are that finding out information. Yeah. yeah, and I'm not saying he's not because he is smart in some way. Like he, I mean, he's yeah. had to figure out all this stuff. And know that other people... Oh, yeah. Did you see those numbers he wrote on the wall? Those are numbers, guys. <laughs> well, and to be fair, he saw all of that stuff when he was a kid. So, him, for him to remember those yeah. symbols, I mean, it does show, okay, he is somewhat intelligent. But, yeah. I mean, he's definitely... Well, that's not how his plans went. Exactly. Like, you could tell that he was smart. He's not an idiot. But yeah. it's not like he used that to come up with a plan to try to stop Shazam. He didn't make any cool machines either. Yeah. Yeah, you know. yeah, I think, I mean, he was a good Savannah for the movie that they were doing. Yeah, exactly. So Yeah. I mean, and they did have the eye that had no purpose except for... Storing the... Storing the seven deadly sins. Yeah. But, I mean, that was... Oh, yeah, he didn't have the special specific eye that I could, could be magic, magic or whatever. Yeah. 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 Which is a big part of his history. But, I mean, that's just nitpicky things. I mean, overall, uh, Mark agreed. Strong... Did an amazing job. Yeah, I He's love him. Fantastic. And I like that person whose name is Savannah. <laughs> we we may be going out of order here, but I do want to mention Mark Strong. I've read some stuff on the internet about people not liking this villain or adding it to that long list of uncompelling villains. Mm. And I'm just kind of done with that because I actually think it's now become a cheap criticism yeah. you don't have to defend. Yeah. Because it's like, unless you're weirdly like this flamboyant villain, unless you're Loki or the Joker... They seem to be able to just levy that criticism. If you're a, uh, I'll come at the Joker. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like that's it's like that. Uh, I mean, I think you'll appreciate this. Like, not every villain can be like this clownish, wacky, yeah. grinning character, or as sympathetic as Loki can be. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I actually I have seen some of that criticism, and I mean, I'm not going to sit here and defend that and say they're wrong. I'm right. Whatever. I'll say that. I, <laughs> I just think that this whole rhetoric of the CGI gray villain thing, and then now it being attributed to characters like Savannah and Mark Strong's character, which has a backstory. You feel sorry for him. And Absolutely. Stuff. I mean, he has a ca- character development in the story. Without question. So and it's not a fucking Steppenwolf situation where it's yeah, like, okay, exactly. I don't give two fucks about this character. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, it's the same thing when people were saying, and I'm glad because I think we all liked this movie. Mm-hmm. I think. Yep. Uh, it's, it's the same thing. There's this... Uh, unjustified skepticism at this point about DC movies. Yeah. It just, it really is. They, how many movies do they have to make that are at least good to amazing yeah. before that? It just does. It's a nonsensical position to take that. They're not good. There was, this might be kind of away from the movie, but within the universe, there was a good point that I saw that somebody said was if this movie came out in between man of steel and Batman versus Superman. Yeah. 
would this have helped the perception of the DC universe? I think absolutely. Uh, absolutely. I, I think so too, because they made a good point of like, oh, all this string of like kind of dark and gritty movies and then two lighthearted movies back to back. Yeah. And it's still not changing people's perceptions of the DC universe because they're just still like, oh, well, you know, that Batman versus Superman and all those. It's like, okay, well, I mean, so now you're not happy that there's good lighthearted movies coming out and they're all tonally very different. Like, yeah. What do you, I don't. <laughs> well, it, it was, I, I want to say, I think it was a mistake that DC made to leave all of their universe to one person's vision yeah. itself. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I think that was where Marvel went the other direction, where they had a number of different writers and some, you know, kind of producers who were responsible for o- overarching themes Well, you had stories, like the Russo but... brothers doing like the really big yeah. kind of storylines, and then they would pull from the other directors, Exa- mm-hmm. yeah. like movies. I think that's the perfect way to do it. Like, yeah. I mean... so, so I completely agree. And the tone of this movie, I mean, that's a thing we can talk about. What did you guys f- think about the tone? absolutely perfect for that character i know i loved it so much yeah. i mean it's so lighthearted. it's funny but it, it had some really intense creepy moments i was oh, yeah. telling noah the f- when that lady disintegrated i blah, i felt my soul escape my body for a little bit i mean <laughs> that was, was truly a terrifying part it was super unexpected yeah because most like leading up to that point like you kind of got this billy like backstory and stuff and then it goes back to older savannah and yeah. then that happens and i was like oh, oh my gosh. god <laughs> uh yeah there were a few moments in this that i thought were kind of horrifying and surprising for the time the um the sins when they take the boardroom down yeah i love that scene so much it's great it's ridiculous <laughs> No one was saying that he was surprised someone got thrown out the window, but I was like, no, the second they showed that room and it was just a window full of glass, I was <laughs> yeah. like, lots of people are going to be got, thrown through oh, the window. Oh, by the way, uh, so the, when we saw this movie, uh, it couldn't have been better for this random effect where there was a kid in <laughs> yeah. the theater yeah. and the kid would just yell out what was happening, <laughs> but in perfectly time way, it's like, he's got lightning hands. Or or it would, in that scene, it was like, that monster ate his head. I was like, you got yeah, him right there is a scene where the, one of the synths bites a guy's head off yeah. and then throws his decapitated body out the window. Yeah. But that kid made it so much more funny because yeah. like, he bit his head off. Yeah. It's like, yes, he did. Correct. <laughs> so, also, weren't you a little too young to be seeing that? Yeah. So it does have these weird, dark... Uh, grot- uh, you know, kind of uh, grotesque moments, I guess. But also, for the most part, it's so funny. <laughs> yeah. So fu- better than the trailers. I was so worried that the trailers would t- just take all, all the good the funny- jokes. Yeah. yeah. I think they barely scratched the surface. It's yeah. really good. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, out of all of us, I've seen it twice already. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I will say that, like, every joke still hit mm-hmm. funny every time. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, and I'm not just saying that because, you know, I like the character and stuff. It was, it's legitimately funny. Like you can't help, but just feel good watching this movie because at the baseline of it, it's a kid becoming a superhero. Everybody wants to be a superhero. There's just something funny in every <laughs> single scene. Yeah. Like yeah. I think you, we talked about this beforehand, but the, the scene where in the convenience store, <laughs> yeah. when he's finding out he's bulletproof, and then Freddie is like, shoot him shoot in the him. face. We have to see. <laughs> and Zach, because they want to know if it's just the costume that's yeah. bulletproof or if it's him. Yeah, and Shazam's <laughs> face is like, what are you doing? We're like, what? No, I don't want to do this. Yeah, <laughs> but like yeah. even something just like low key, like when they're talking, when him and Billy are talking in the cafeteria, I think it's for the first time, mm-hmm. and Freddie just throws his whole tray away into yeah. the garbage. <laughs> I'm just like, oh my god. That that scene is specifically really funny when you see it, but I love that part every time. I see it because it's like why it's just little tiny things that are really fun. So so and because I think the writing's really good, that's obvious. I mean yeah. the, the story has these jokes that really work and move the plot along and everything like that. But also the chemistry between Zachary Levi and Jack Grazer yeah. is really high level stuff. This it's like I don't know, like Nick Nolte and Eddie Murphy, or I mean yeah, yeah. pick your comedy team that you like the best, but I think they're right up there. Yeah. I I think it's the cast and the chemistry and their characters, I think it, I hope it doesn't go unnoticed with this movie, but the actor that plays Billy as a kid and Zachary. It's and Asher their, Angel. Yes. And Angel. their relationship between Freddie, because he plays one character mm-hmm. until the end. Yeah. But um, 
I think their chemistry does not get lost. No. Yeah. Even with two separate people playing the same character. Oh, that's a good point. Well, yeah, and absolutely. like PSA, Zachary Levi is a national treasure. I love him. <laughs> On and off the screen, he has a beautiful voice. He's a beautiful person. But I feel like, I mean, now is kind of like the time of child actors. And mm-hmm. I feel like the children really did a good job. Like Zachary Levi did amazing. Yeah. No doubt. But I mean, the child acting in this movie, in, in a in a time where like it and yeah. stranger things is happening i feel like child actors are that's just a good really point. taking the torch it's definitely it's funny to see entertainment kind of go that route and i think it it also for this movie specifically in this character it's a good thing because it's funny yeah it's funny to see kids in this type of situation and i mean they pulled off the drama the comedy yeah. Yeah. i was I think just super so. impressed one of the things that i you know we talked about in our deep dive uh, what do you hope to see? I got what I wanted, at least, I think, because, you know, I sort of suggested that, m- you know, movies can often make children kind of two dimensional mm-hmm. yeah. and act like, yeah, well, they're just You wanted dumb. something darker. Uh, well, I wanted just something that had gravity in terms of like the emotional stakes for the characters, mm-hmm. because you see all those cool moments, which we knew we were going to get where they were very much like the movie big. This actually pays a few references to, which are Literally. hilarious yeah. Yeah, unto themselves. <laughs> yeah. But I knew we were going to have like, oh my God, you could lift a truck. Hey, yeah. let's go find Let's them. go get alcohol. <laughs> or, or some <laughs> boobies or whatever. Which happens. Which they times. do. <laughs> we'll get back to that because I actually thought, I'm glad that they they handled it tastefully, yeah. but yeah. they didn't shy away from, okay, that is what 14-year-old boys <laughs> yeah, would course. do. Okay, yeah. they, if, if, for, they go to a strip club, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but this had uh, real stakes, and what I thought was really cool about it is that embedded in this movie is this kind of like coming-of-age story mm-hmm. and, uh, uh, of, with these two kids that are 14 and 15, and they're very close and everything, and it's like that story where one gets a girlfriend or one gets a car, or one just one gets a, a, a kind of level of adulthood over the other one. And in this case, it just happens to be superpowers. Yeah. But the way that it kind of like, you know, ha- puts a wedge in their friendship, I thought that was done as well as I've seen yeah. in a movie. Yeah. yeah, You know, it just so happens there's lightning and superpowers in this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is a really good point. I didn't think about that aspect of, or that type of movie or relationship that's in this movie. Yeah. That's a really good point. I do... I, I, I can't stress enough that I, I think they hit on everything that a 14-year-old would do with superpowers or even just becoming an adult all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. So, like, big. I mean, they found out they could get money this way. Yeah. yeah. And what do they do when they get money? They buy games and, like, all yeah. this Junk stuff. food. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's Well, just, just the relative value, too, where they're like, we have $20, so we're going to be rich. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really good. I mean, it's just baseline it's just a good movie it's mm-hmm. lighthearted. it's funny it has stakes which i really appreciated that they did do have they had some type of gravity in it maybe not black adam type of stakes or anything that's true yeah. but it did have its stakes in L- let's back up a bit because i think we are going to probably be on a gush fest for most of this yeah let's talk briefly about stuff we didn't like because there's some i mean and nothing's perfect even though i would we'll get to scoring later i would put this very Hi, there are a few things that I wasn't as into, and I'm just curious what if you guys had anything I mean, I that think comes to mind. Kayla kind of said her only. Right? Well, yeah, well, yeah. It's one is Savannah's interpretation. Of course, that could have been anyone. Mm-hmm. They could have named a different character, and it he, could have worked. He doesn't get translated with the same vivid sort of betrayal. He could have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sense, and yeah. so, and also while watching the film, I feel, and I don't disagree with the choice. I just feel like it took a little bit to get the rhythm of it. They started, I mean, you don't see Billy for a while. It mm-hmm. really, you start with Savannah's character for a good portion of the beginning. At least like 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You don't see Shazam, Billy at all. And I'm like, okay, okay. And then again, it makes sense with the themes, the potential for goodness, which mm-hmm. I think is an amazing thing we'll talk about later. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just the wholesome family dynamics. Yeah. Um, but also, and you mentioned really liking this, the the closure that he gets with his his mother, basically, yeah. in the movie. And I like that at the beginning, he was really focused on it. But I feel like, and they juggled it really well. I feel like I didn't need that closure in this movie with his mother, finding it out. I feel like him throwing away that notebook with all of the addresses and all of the times that he was trying to find her would have been enough for me at this time. I, I do agree with that because I think... Looking, it's like seeing it twice and really thinking about that. I liked that. I guess they did it and it's out of the way. Yeah. But also, it does feel a little rushed. Yeah. Only in because it's like, oh, he found out of his mom that she, you know, spoiler, she didn't want him or anything. She just like kind of let him go because she was so young. 
And then that was it. I f- yeah. And then he just I, was I feel like, like oh, he I should have, have a family After now. <laughs> throwing away the notebook, it should have focused on him bonding with his foster family, which, again, I feel like foster families in movies are never portrayed that great. But yeah. I think this was fantastic. It, yeah. Like, every single person in that home, the, the parents were very loving and very caring. And that was, I mean, credit. I think, I think to the movie's credit, it might have done that only... Because they, I, I think the wizard had said, I open my heart to you. Like, I'm fully, like, giving you my powers. I think they were trying to do it as if, like, his mother was holding him back. And once he was finally able to fully accept his family, then he was. Yeah. And I, I mean, I can appreciate that. Like, like even closing that door helped him accept <laughs> yeah. the foster family a little faster because he compared it to what he had and what he has now. And he's like, mm-hmm. well, that is family. Yeah. What I have now. I, I think, actually, I'm, I have to disagree a little bit because I think you're too right. And that's no only. I'm, I'm actually too right. I'm actually surprised uh, to hear that because we didn't talk about this before the podcast. Yeah, that was one of that. I feel the same way. I felt like the mom and the like. There was that. As a matter of fact, for me, the whole story with her, I didn't think we really needed. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, uh, it, I mean, like the, the why she did it and exa- him finding that, her again. Exactly, him just wanting to find his mom and looking for it yeah. establishes that motivation, and then accepting this awesome foster family Mm -hmm. really told as that's right. And you didn't need to risk the really overly awful mom in a certain way. When he goes to see her, she's like, well, I got to go get beaten up by my boyfriend. So I got no time for you. (laughs) Yeah. You know, I agree a thousand percent. And I'm actually, I guess I'm a bit surprised at that because it's this redundant part in an otherwise very tight script, I think. Yeah. And again, they have to juggle so much. There's technically, what, like nine villains in the movie. Yeah. 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 And I feel like they did a great job of balancing it out. Just that one part, I feel like. If they cut it away, they could have dedicated more time with Billy bonding with his new family, and that would have made the ending even more powerful. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm... I don't necessarily disagree with you guys. I think I like it because it gave that type of emotional impact with that character, and it was a very sad moment. I mean... It, to me, I was just like, this is probably the most, like, not adult theme, but, like, very, s- the, the saddest moment in the entire movie. I mean, just him finding out that, like, his mom just didn't want him. Well, yeah. Like, I was just like, oh, God, that's, like, so that's so sad compared to, like, him literally just joking, like, five minutes ago. But, I mean, I don't know. I think you either, you had to have more emotional stakes for the character. And it was either him, sure. like, accepting his foster family, which he did anyway. Mm-hmm. Or finding out about his mother. I don't like I think the main purpose of it might have been just his him seeing his foster family really did care about him and yeah, they're like, absolutely. Hey, we found we found your mom for you, go get closure. And then later he was able to give them his powers because he fully accepted him as his family. Mm-hmm. I don't know. What do what do you think about the fact with the with both foster situations or but both situations, I suppose, the biological mom and the foster situation. I thought they, this isn't a huge criticism, but they ran the gamut between unrealistically awful and unrealistically wonderful. I love that the Vasquez's are as good as they are, but there was a part of me, because I'm not a foster kid, but part of me that thinks it might have been an over Norman Rockwellization of the foster system. Uh, again, I would ne- I t- don't take anything away from uh, foster parents it's a very hard thing wonderful but there was a part of me that was like they have you know this is this is a great family by any like you know what i mean very high level yeah i don't i don't think it's unrealistic with okay. how they acted uh, not even just with the comic because in the comic they're the same exact exactly way. that's true yeah, but yeah. I, I mean i i know a couple of foster parents and stuff and they're very much like that they sure. try to make the house as fun as possible and they like almost like, overdo it yeah okay and, well that's and that's perfectly fine i think the most unrealistic thing about the foster system that they had was the actual system there is no way that they would be like oh we're not sending you back to your city that had the cps case that had all of this gotcha, stuff we're just yeah. going to keep you here and put you in this family that just happened to be here like that's the most unrealistic part like if you i guess you want to like nitpick yeah, the realism in this, I, I don't feel like that was realistic. There's a nonchalance with like, "Hey, here's another family, like yeah, hang out I with mean, them." Yeah, you've ran away twenty something times, and like you just like s- used a police system and stuff like that. You're <laughs> not getting any jail time or anything, but yeah. you're just we feel bad for you because you're a foster kid. It's like okay, well, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if you want to, talk, I guess talk about like what's real, or not. I don't, I don't know. That's just my criticism with it. Yeah. But I feel like if I mean, if you have that many kids, all different ages from all different backgrounds. 
I mean, if I was to be in their situation, I'd probably try to make it the same way. Well, they were foster kids themselves. Exactly. And that, I think that was a good point for them to make that, like, we get it. We know how it is. Like, yeah, you you love video games, fucking play them. (laughs) But I mean, I was just, I remember watching it and thinking, man, I I had both my parents and I'd rather live with these people. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I mean, (laughs) they were pretty great. Yeah. I mean, they're they're really a standout characters. The Vasquez's are like the heroes of the story yeah right? in 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 a kind of non-narrative sense but like in terms of the most heroic people it's kind of hard to argue that they don't really take that spotlight they mm-hmm. really are concerned about the parents and they're kind of or that the kids and they're the kind of like moral center of the whole movie I yeah. Think. yeah yeah they gave them a home and a home mm-hmm. is like the big theme of shazam like mm-hmm. he's he has to find a home he has to call home home <laughs> like i mean yeah i don't know I like them a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Any other negative criticism? Oh. Um, I like how our negative criticism is like, wasn't that good, but it ended up being the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I forgot. The first <laughs> no, no it's true, though. I am out of things that I can complain about. So I, w- initially when I came out of the movie, Jared was over the moon. Oh, yeah, I forgot so, we were going to be fighting about this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. He was really happy about it. And he was, he saw the look on my face. I, try, <laughs> like, I want to put this out there. I love this movie. It's, I will get to rankings later, but it's way up there for Well, me. I was so, I loved it so much when I saw that you were upset. I was like, oh, it's not that he shit his pants. That's <laughs> it. That's why I came no, It can't movie. be related to the movie. No, because yeah. it was perfect. So the only, I guess the only criticism that I had with it is, from seeing all these superhero movies and we're so spoiled with that yeah and we see all these big action scenes and these huge <laughs> climactic fights part of me was expecting some type of i don't know man of steel zod fight yeah type of thing only because like you see that in the comics the superman shazam versus black adam thing that happened with their movie and stuff that's what i was expecting and it wasn't there and it wasn't a bad thing for me it just took me by surprise, I guess, if that's a thing I can say. I don't know. Like, I just, I was expecting something else or just kind of assuming it would happen, and it didn't. So I was like, oh, oh okay. I'm, I'm with you that I feel like they, rather than go so overboard like these movies do, it's more like they just checked those blocks. You could tell that they weren't really trying to do the most explosive right. set pieces. They were, they do get moments like that, like the bus scene. Yeah, yeah. It's really cool. They have, He and Savannah have a fight at the end where they're definitely flying and crashing each other. And, and but see, even with stuff. that, like, there's the, I know what you're laughing at, too. When they're like a mile apart. Oh, it's so good. He's like, I, what are you <laughs> so saying? Good. Are you yeah. monologuing right now? So, this scene is so funny because once you see it you start thinking about all the other scenes that are like that yeah, in exactly. other movies yeah. they're a mile apart and Savannah, like villains do are saying their big monologue in a like, real way like yeah. he's committed yeah. and he means Shazam it. is just like are you talking I, I can't it's like, I'm buses? gonna rip your heart out and eat it in front of you and then you're ch- yeah it's- yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's so funny but like and that's not a bad criticism at all I thought it went correct with the movie it was the same tone and everything but yeah I think that was my only because like I was expecting some type of Black Adam. Fight I feel like them, they but... could have they had a choice, right? Yeah. So for this movie, they could have done a really cool battle with Savannah and the the Seven Deadly Sins, mm-hmm. um, as like the climactic moment, like a really cool fight scene, like you see a lot in like the Avengers movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Normally, like the big thing that it's building towards, or they could have had the climax that they chose, which was kind of the family. Yeah. The yeah. Shazam family, which is a really good point, and like. And then seeing it a second time, not knowing that there's not going to be this big fight. Yeah. I was excited the entire time to get to that moment. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're like, okay, this is what the movie's climax, this movie should yeah. have been. Yeah. It so. could have maybe uh, when the family, after the climax, when the family is all charged up, they might have had a little bit more of a bare knuckle brawl with the sins. Because mm-hmm. I even at the time, I remember thinking it's like, they're kind of just, there's a bunch of scenes of them wrestling with them. Like, there's well, not even be... clear, like, somebody punches it's one. It's like, not all times. of them have the super strength to do that. <laughs> they, well, do they be... not? I thought they all No, so they do... all do have super strength, but not in Pedro hand. is, so like we did in the deep dive, yeah. each one of them has... One of the powers. Yeah, yeah. more yeah. Uh, over the other one. Yeah, so yeah. Pedro is the big muscly guy, and, you so know, Darla, cool. my favorite one, is <laughs> the <is> speedster. <laughs> She's so pure. Oh, was it the favorite, <laughs> the speedster powers? <laughs> but I do agree with that. Like, I mean, but also, 
remember they just got their powers. Yeah. So it took Billy weeks to learn how to use these. They're thrown in with the tons w- of totally. YouTube yeah. videos. Yeah, and like they just have to know how to use these powers. No, it's more like uh, it's just like a blocking issue, like in the direction where they could have literally like because you know they're fighting. Yeah. So it's not like they weren't fighting. It was just like give me a one shot where like Darla like she actually has more than most people or uh, yeah. which or, I loved exactly yeah. or Freddy sh- literally show him punching a bad guy. Yeah. yeah. And I think it kind of to that moment and it may have satisfied your feeling of like where's this big fight action moment? i think yeah i mean and, and savannah and shazam had that kind of moment i think the biggest yeah. moment that was like i guess man of steel type fight was when they were shooting electricity at each other and mm-hmm. then they like rammed into each other that scene was amazing it was really cool but yeah i mean i i do agree with you i think darla had the most standout moment mm-hmm. out of all of them which i thought was amazing and she's she was a breakout character She's of so that. Pure. I didn't expect yeah. them to kind of focus on her as much as they did. I loved it. Yeah, because <laughs> you really want to be invested in this family. Yes, and they're all they all engender, uh, they all get engendered to you. Yeah, but she's the one where you're like, how do you not protect her? You <laughs> yeah. have to protect her. Yeah. yeah. So I know we got a lot to talk about that, but that moment that it is the climax of this film. It's a huge, it must be a huge surprise to people that didn't read the comics. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, or didn't listen to our deep dive. Exa- <laughs> absolutely. Which, you know, really their fault. But uh, <laughs> when they all grab the staff. Billy! And, oh God, I didn't think about the joke. Hilarious. Yeah. Uh, no, say the name that I say. I, and then they all become the thing. Yeah. I, I didn't just cry a little bit. I swear to God, I made this noise. I was like, <gasps> like I kind of like he, sucked in. <laughs> like he did. It was I was working to contain my emotions. Yeah. Yeah. And it was really funny too because you could tell who the fans of the character are. Because yeah. I think like back to my left, there was this girl that was like, <gasps> <laughs> she was so excited. It like was... all the wind just got taken out of the theater. I was Be- just like, yes, because they did such a good job of not even hinting. That this was going to happen. Yeah. I, I did not think it was going to happen. No, I agree. At all. Well, n- now a few seconds before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah once the he fans had the staff are like, oh, I know what's going to They're going to do it. Yeah. Uh, because, yeah, I thought maybe they would refer to it later on. Yeah. Like kind of how War Machine or that and would Iron be Man. The sequel. Yeah, yeah. Like, exactly. That's exactly. I feel like if they didn't know that they were going to get a sequel, which they don't, you know, we don't know Shazam 2. Is that confirmed? No. I, I actually think maybe? I saw something that they were already going to start doing Shazam 2. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But like if they didn't know, I feel like that was a good thing to end yeah. with. That's a good point. So. Yeah. It could, it could, if they don't come out with a second one, obviously you'll be super upset about it. Yeah. But it's a good movie and a good ending to yeah, that story. Yeah. 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 Which doesn't happen enough. Yeah. This doesn't feel like. It's sacrificing a good climax to just be the launch pad for something else. Yeah. yeah. That was a very smart thing for them to have done. Uh, but I have to say, too, what's amazing about that moment and the climax of this movie is that it's so integrated with the theme of the movie. Yeah. yeah. And I actually wanted to make a comparison because I watched X-Men Apocalypse recently. Mm-hmm. And there's a scene where it's about, if you've seen the movie, it's where Apocalypse is about to lose. Okay. <laughs> and it's the turning of the tide. In the fight. Mm-hmm. And Professor X says something. That's cool. He's like, oh, you'll never win because you're alone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then they all beat him, right? That's awesome. And what a good theme. Unfortunately, they didn't talk about that theme for the entirety of the movie. Yeah. And compare it to this. In oh, this, I thought you meant I thought you meant they did that didn't do that in a Shazam. No, this like, is mm. that's precisely my point. In this, that whole that's the entire yeah. sort of kind of uh crisis of the movie is family and what you have to let go to have a family and everything like that. Mm-hmm. So to have the absolute climax of the movie to be like the achievement of that lesson. Yeah. yeah I was like, this is I which, got shivers. Yeah, that was amazing. Which they don't do enough. And that's why I think I was initially confused coming out of the theater because yeah. I really liked it. Yeah. I just didn't get something I was expecting. I was like, I feel weird because this is different. Yeah. But I really liked it. Yeah. (laughs) Well, the the criticism, what do you call it? The the tagline people kept throwing around was, you know, this is the movie... I didn't know I needed. Yeah, yes. yeah. And I think there's some truth to that, which is it really wasn't precedent. Also, side note, no forced romance subplot. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. At all. Yeah. Yeah. The romance was already there with the Vasquez. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. They are like couple goals right there. <laughs> yeah. Well, and to, not to be fair, I mean, because I completely agree with you. I think that's good that they didn't have one. They didn't shove it in there. It's that a lot of what a romantic subplot would 
be about is already in the bromance here. Yeah, the friend, yeah. you know what I mean. Like so, all the stuff about like this this personal crisis that's you character find, but it isn't really involved in the larger like yeah. you know will they defeat? I feel the like evil family thing. isn't enough focused on in movies, I completely especially agree. superhero movies. But I love that theme so much. You're right. Or any other relationship aside from a romantic one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean, and can we just say like how good Freddy was? Like, I mean, he's the glue of the movie in a lot of I ways. I love him so much. I'm so glad that they made him such a big character in this because you read the Shazam comics and Billy and Freddy are just such good friends. They're and the they bestest. really, yeah, they really BFFs solidified for that. life. <laughs> it was so good. And the actor was amazing. He, also, the ki- the adults that played the kids yeah. looked just like <laughs> them. Like, I mean, for the most part, it's, it's crazy. They casted this movie perfectly it was great i know that actor jack grazer plays eddie and it eddie's my Mm -hmm. favorite character and so he plays freddy and shazam and i'm still like this is still my favorite character and they're really i mean what's funny about those two characters just to compare them they're pretty they're both very funny yeah but they're very different kinds of funny Mm -hmm. yeah because they uh eddie's a very subdued yeah like kind of like it it falls on him he's very neurotic and everything in this he plays a much more like let's go fuck shit up (laughs) and i mean wouldn't say that but you know know, yeah 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 no that that is funny he's much more of like an ass and sarcastic character and then you know billy's just kind of like humbly funny <laughs> yeah <laughs> or kind of like emo funny yeah yeah, parts yeah. Like. <laughs> he's definitely emo funny yeah i mean and the bit, one of the my favorite scenes is straight from the comics is when i mean for some reason freddie almost gets hit by a car with those bullies which yeah. i was like that's excessive yeah, <laughs> like yeah. they run him over with a car i mean bullies in movies are, a lot of times and are this i mean i think they're trying to symbolize bully things which are a little bit more like diffuse so, so, because I agree, I remember watching it, where it's like the bully starts <gasps> cutting his stomach. Yeah. Where it's like, okay, that's awful, but that that key. Would I mean, be in- I think I mean the sample size of stuff like that happening is very small compared yeah. to like just name calling. Yeah, but it does happen. So, yeah, I mean, I I not, do like that they. It's not unprecedented, sure? but I'm yeah. like, god damn, this is like. Yeah, so they do that, but the it's straight from the comics where he, Billy literally hits the bully with Freddy's crutch yeah, in the comics great. and he did it in that. And I was like, yep. <laughs> it, it's a very minor criticism. I kind of wanted Billy to beat them up a little bit more because in, because he's a street kid. So in the, in the uh, comic, he just outfights them. He just yeah. beats the shit out Instead, of them. Instead he whacks them with the crutch and runs and away. Then, yeah. So they make him look a little, but I don't, I don't know if they were I think just it flowed to... well with the movie. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Because then he went yeah. into the subway and then he got, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The rest is history. <laughs> um, the guy, I don't know how to pronounce this guy's name but the wizard uh jiman hinsu or hansu or something like that i know the actor uh, this is so it doesn't matter to our criticism i just love that he was in both captain marvel and shazam yeah. at the same time <laughs> yeah. well, i think we mentioned that before but that's really cool i also wanted to draw attention to the fact listen to our other movie reviews because we are gushing so hard on this movie right now but we're not just uh what do you call it like uh knee-jerk boosters of everything yeah you know like aquaman we liked that yeah and we all said good things about it but we we're like okay it had these problems and stuff like that so I, anybody listen to this right now i just want you to know like we're we're <laughs> I, we love this movie and it's not just because we feel like we should have to or something yeah. like yeah. that. yeah yeah i mean it's yeah, I mean, we all have our certain criticisms with it, but yeah. which we should. I mean, I from seeing general impressions of this movie, it's well received. It's mm-hmm. probably as much well received as Wonder Woman was from what I've seen. Yeah. So, which makes me as a DC fan pretty happy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. For real. Like, yeah, it's a good movie, guys. Like, I'm just so excited for the future of DC after seeing this movie because mm-hmm. it's proof that they don't have to do the whole dark stuff. Mm-hmm. And the dark stuff wasn't working. And I actually really liked some of those movies, like Batman vs. Superman. I, I I will probably die the on that hill. Cut. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the director's cut. I yeah. liked that movie a whole bunch, but I mean, like, this is a fresh take, and I feel like they don't they I just hope they roll with this potential. Yeah, I agree. I, I think and let's not forget, like, you can have a dark themed movie. Yeah. Like Shazam has dark themes in it, but it doesn't feel dark. It's not gritty. Yeah. And I think it just it de- it's dependent on the character, and I think DC may have also take that a note. Now. This is how you do humor, guys. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Write it well. I mean, one of the so you we talked about that moment where they're both hovering and the, the <laughs> joke about like, what? Are you, I can't hear you. Are you saying something to me right now? What's so great about that from a comedy writing standpoint isn't just that it has it's a good joke. It's that it's so organic to the story. It came right out. It's a situation that needed to happen. They were going to have that happens in so many superhero movies. Yeah, exactly. And to have that, and it and it makes sense for Zachary Levi for 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 Billy 
to to think that, like <laughs> to be silly in that moment. So it's yeah, just it so good. It didn't feel like shoehorned in there. It didn't feel exactly. like out of place. It's the, like that's his character. That's who he's been this entire movie. So nobody's going to think well, that's see, weird. You know, I yeah. This, it's not a quip. Yeah. yeah, it's not just a you know. Like, and oh, I didn't know it was going to happen right before. You yeah. know, mm-hmm. I feel like again, I always bash Marvel humor. Some of it is really good, guys. I swear. <laughs> but like a lot of the times, I know the line before they say it, and that yeah, you know, you know it's still like. Huh. That's that's funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but for this movie, I was genuinely like surprised by a lot which, of the deliveries. I think of that what was happened. your criticism with Aquaman. You're like, okay, I, they were going to make these jokes, which I think almost everybody expected, only because it's the fish humor, it's yeah. the stuff that we would have already expected. Yeah. But that is a good point. Like, I mean, when you kind of know it's coming, it's like, oh, I'll laugh, kind of giggle at it, but also, it's not like once I see it again, I'm not going to be like, this is the best part. Yeah. Like, I, also, I, I meant to mention this uh, last time and it just kind of fizzled out or we didn't get to it. But the reason that sometimes those jokes feel that way and especially forced and is that that literally is how they're done in the process. You probably probably mm-hmm. already knew this. Like if you think about it, they do a lot of those in punch up and in post. Mm-hmm. So you can tell that the jokes, most of the jokes in this were written in the script. Yeah. They were part of a story. Absolutely. As opposed to just taking this movie like they did with Aquaman. Oh, here'd be a funny moment. Exactly. Let's, we can put a little joke here because it's kind of a slow moment or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, but the, uh, and I, I think it's worth mentioning because we talk about tone so much, uh, not just now, but in, we talk about comic movies and it is such a small element to a larger, like, kind of panoply of things that go right and wrong with movies. But the lesson that fans take away is, was it dark, was it light, and that's good or bad. Mm -hmm. I think if you take those Zack Snyder movies, their issue isn't their dark tone. Their issue is they're often really convoluted and not in touch with the theme that they're sort of working with. And they feel mixed up and they seem to lack direction. Again, I'm not saying that's totally true. I actually like those movies. But I mean, the problems involved in that. In this, this script is so tight yeah you know? i i mean the acts one two and three all fit together so well that's well it's economical i was really amazed at just like man this does not drag for a moment yeah no and because it just naturally flows not even just with the jokes but the story like there's always something a reason why something's happening absolutely it's not like okay a fight's about to happen we should like make them kind of like joke about it, right? and then like something happens but yeah. it didn't do that at all which i really liked and, and I th- I gotta say, I, I don't care that it's a bit, not heavy handed, but you can really see the moves here a lot yeah, of times. Yeah. Like it's not disguised, it's, it's like Greek architecture. You can see how the pillars hold up the top, yeah. but I would rather them really crawl well before they get to s- your fancy walking. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I feel like a lot of these movies, they, they try to fancy walk. But they don't. Why am I talking like this? You're I don't not know. building the foundation. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Like I don't care if I can see that. I, I, it's like I don't even care if it's original. Execute it well. Yeah. And I feel like they really did that here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I agree. I. Well, I guess thinking back on it now, the the biggest thing I didn't like about it mm-hmm. was the seven deadly sins. You felt like they were a bit. Can I guess? Were they a bit boring? Yeah. I felt. So, I mean, it, just in the comics and stuff like that. Like again. There's material for them and we know how they are. Like, I mean, they're, they don't look like that in some of the stories and stuff like that. Like, they're actual, like, deities of that sin. And they all come together to make this big, like, megazord of a sin. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, megazord. <laughs> but, I mean, I just, I mean, I guess they just needed something else that the family would all eventually fight. Yeah. Maybe. And, and it is alluding to, like, the character's history and stuff, but I feel like they're so, so ingrained with the history of the character mm-hmm. that I mean, are they going to bring him back? Like they already, you, you know what I mean? Potentially, like yeah. It's kind of in a weird way. Aside from Black Adam, it's like their Riddler. Like it's like Shazam's Riddler. Like he's a they're a big it's an enough. Import, villain. I mean, they're the purpose of the the Rock of Eternity. I yeah, think there's the another villain Shazam. that they have that might be a little closer to the Riddler. <laughs> <laughs> and my boy, Mister Mind, was in there twice. <laughs> I was gonna, I was actually gonna say like, well, they did, you didn't get really good uh, sins, but you got an awesome yeah. Mister Mind. I'm super so, happy about that. He's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> I at that moment, it's a mid credit scene yeah. when he really is when he's talking to Savannah. If you didn't listen to our deep dive or, or or you're not a comic fan, you have to be like, what the fuck <laughs> literally is going on there was this, right now? There, I just love the slow zoom into this <laughs> yeah. tiny little worm. Yeah. There was the, a couple next to me when I saw it the second time. Uh, there had to be like 70 or so. Yeah. I don't know if they know the comics, but I know they don't because when that <laughs> happened, the woman was like, 
what <laughs> is that? Yeah, I was just great. cackling obnoxiously the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, it's wonderful. But I mean, that's another good thing that this movie does. And I'm liking that DC is embracing the absurdity good. Yeah, yeah, of yeah. these characters. Yeah. Like, don't be afraid to make a fucking worm talk. <laughs> yeah. That's in the comments. And just like, wait, too, because like the, the potential for that character as a threatening villain is very high. I just love like, that. A telepath. He's the overlord I choose. Yeah. I just <laughs> love that he's like, I named the gods. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The seven realms are going to kneel before us. I was like, yeah. <laughs> As long as there are no birds, yeah. <laughs> we'll kill all the birds. It's so funny. It was so good. I love that they're leaning into it but and the, they're going with the character's history. But yeah. ba- back to the sins, I actually, I agree with you. I, I excused it very early. I actually thought it might've been a budget thing. Mm. Uh, just that I think they may have, I'm mean, that may not be true at all, but I was just thinking like, oh, they didn't put attention on that. Cause I agree. I think that they could have been a little bit more personalized. And even if they didn't go into their story, yeah. you could have, I mean, color would have well, gone a long yeah. way. It could have just been, I mean, there I feel was like no, they had to share the screen with a lot of other things. Yeah, yeah. There was no room to have this big Savannah story arc and kind of paralleling it with Billy's. So like yeah. Savannah's story went bad. Billy's went good. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like if you were to add, I guess, all this Seven Deadly Sins stuff into it. Have them all have personalities. Yeah. and It might have been too me, busy. Well, part yeah. of me felt like. So when you first see the seven deadly sins with Savannah, when he goes in there and he's getting tested by the wizard, like, you know, not to get subjected to their influence. Yeah. Their influence. I felt like that was it. Like I, I thought that was what they were going to be in the movie. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. I thought you were going to kind of see them and they would come on later. It would be like a nudge, nudge to yeah. the comic book fans. Yeah. And I was like, okay, that's, that's fine. That makes sense. Like I'm, I'm okay with this. And then when they like actually came out and they were like, Oh, we're going to fight with you or whatever. I was like, Oh, Okay, All right. but to back up a little bit, I like that they ended up being the source of Savannah's powers, and the reason being is we're going to have Black Adam later, yeah. and I think that if he had just ha- straight up had Billy's powers, just a copy, it really would have kind of subtracted from the, the, the Black Adam later on. Which mm-hmm. I think I think we did talk about yeah. in deep dive, like what we were expecting, because I was afraid whenever I did see him have powers, I was like, okay, so we're just going to have another villain. Of the same kind, yeah, yeah, with a different name, but I am glad. Like that's why it's like okay, I guess how the seven deadly sins were in it and Savannah too. That's how I feel. Yeah, it's just like all right. Yeah, they're that like worked. okay. Both of his like really staple villains are in here. Their stories kind of done. And credit scene shows Savannah still around. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I it's it's also a good formula because I think a lot of times saving the it's like how they did it with the Dark Knight. It's like knowing that you're going the first movie is going to be setting up the hero so much, and you won't necessarily have the time to equally build up the villain. Okay, so have a kind of serviceable villain uh, like a Ra's al Ghul, mm-hmm. uh, but that you don't have to spend so much time on. And then in the second movie, you can spend way more time building up. The villain, this really awesome villain, which will be Black Adam, Maybe. that you want. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, just if that's the direction they go in. Well, apparently yeah. they're making a Black Adam movie. Yeah, yeah. I like, can see it, that. Which I'm perfectly fine Like with. a Joker movie. Yeah. Uh. No, I just, <laughs> I just I just mean the a standalone villain movie. That's yes, it. okay. I was yeah. like, mm, yeah. I'm, mm. no. I would be more excited and more understanding of a Black Adam movie <laughs> than a Joker movie. A completely different conversation. I did not know that was going to create sparks. <laughs> I, mean, I think you know how we feel yeah, about yeah. the Joker movie yeah, yeah. coming out. Even though it looks good, but it could be any other movie aside from a Joker movie. It could just yeah. be a guy that's mentally ill going through What's things it? and creating chaos. But you said it's like just Taxi saying. Driver. Yeah. I mean, with that's what it clown looks like. at the end. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll see. Anyway. <laughs> with a clown at the end. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah I mean, the movie, <sighs> Seven Deadly Sins aside, I mean, They serve their purpose, like you were saying. I mean, for the villains that they created, I guess they had to make Savannah stand up to Shazam. Sure. Which I guess it's a good a good villain. So all right. So what was your guys' favorite part? I think all of our favorite part was that part where they all the flash the the family comes out. Yeah. I mean yeah. But not besides that. (laughs) If you take that part out. Because that's Mm -hmm. the part of the movie in a certain way. Uh, I think mine is uh is the moments where they're video to this is actually in the trailer and i know that so it's not that original but like when they're figuring out what his powers are <laughs> and i mean like that to me that sets such the perfect tone for how the mm-hmm. movie's gonna be have a, like secret fire test <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely yeah and like that when was it was the funniest part. And, and he's like uh eye beams and he like yeah. turns his head and then shoots lightning out of his eyes yeah yeah, 
Yeah, that is yeah. really good. I my favorite part is actually when, <laughs> when he they're in the park or whatever, and like he's I don't know that jungle gym he's like making it all electrical, and there's a lady getting mugged, <laughs> and like Freddy's like go go do it. He's like oh shit, right. oh yeah, and then he's like. He <laughs> saves her, but she's like, no, he was the one screaming. Yeah, like, I, I was fine. Yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, okay, you leave this old lady alone. And <laughs> she's <laughs> like, I'm the same age as you. <laughs> so it's just funny to really see you. So you see him like dealing with being a superhero, using his powers, and yeah. also trying to be an adult. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so funny. He still has the mind of a child. Yeah. <laughs> it's my favorite part. Um, mine's not a singular moment. It's a little bit heavier, right? Mm-hmm. Um. So my favorite thing about Shazam is that it's not good. Like the one of the themes isn't goodness; it's the the potential for good. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the, I know we talked about the movie starts with like little kid, probably eight year old Savannah, being tested, mm-hmm. and he's. He, I mean, like in the brief glimpse that you see, he's a neglected child. He's obviously had like experienced some sort of abuse with his family, mm-hmm. and he's deemed not worthy. So yeah. like he is, you know, like you had mentioned, under the influence of the seven deadly sins, doesn't mm-hmm. do that, and. You see that the sh- the wizard's testing a lot of people throughout the movie, and when it's Billy's time, at that point, Billy's been kind of a dick. Yeah, and the wizard basically tells him like, "You're my last hope. Like, you're my last option. I wouldn't have chosen you, but mm-hmm. here you go." Yeah, and I- then he kind of falls into the powers. It's just like the potential for good. I feel is a better theme for audiences, especially kids that are kind of going through a lot, as opposed to you're inherently good or you're yeah. inherently bad. Mm-hmm. And I do like how. Because it's in the comics too, and they they said it in the movie where Billy flatly tells him like, "Look, man, if you're looking for somebody that's pure heart, you're not going to find it. Yeah, because that doesn't exist. Like, and the no fact wonder. that he rises to the occasion proves yeah. that Billy is a good person. But mm-hmm. it's he didn't start that way. And at the time that he's given the powers, it's like, well, you've kind of been an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yep. yep, you're pretty out of touch, five thousand year old wizard. Yeah, which it does translate a little bit as in the beginning when he does have his powers because he's being selfish with them. Yeah, and mm-hmm. a lot of people are I'm like, making what did- lightning with my hand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 bum, bum, bum. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that part was funny. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think Freddie points out, even though Freddie kind of enabled that behavior, yeah. but Freddie does point out, he's like, what have you done? You're not doing anything yeah, good Aside with your from powers. just fucking off, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. But yeah, I think that is a, that's a really good point. So rankings, what do you rank this in? Uh... Are we just limiting it to DC movies? I okay, think that'd be do, easier. Let's do DC and then do all superhero movies. That's hard. Well, this is a hard podcast. Well, then pause it because I have to think a lot, okay? <laughs> Not about the DC rankings, actually. But... <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Does anyone have their answer? They can go first. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I can go I because I feel like... Uh, so DC, I think this is right under Wonder Woman for me. And I almost feel like it's a matter of taste. It would be kind of hard you... Hard you Hard Which is not a word. Hard to argue. Hard to yeah. argue. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like hangry or something. <laughs> uh, it, would be, it would be hard to argue that this is worse than Wonder Woman just yeah. because Wonder Woman Act 3, for I think, even if you don't think it falls apart, it's not the strongest third act. Yeah. But I still think that the the style, the gravity of Wonder Woman, I like better. So I'm st- I'm going to put this right under, and I I think Wonder Woman. But like, what is your ranking? Like that's what I'm, I'm saying. Oh, okay. Wonder Woman's better, but it's right under it. So no, Wonder Woman's what, worst. Like what number? Like you know, it's one and two. Mm. Oh, okay. So yeah. Shazam is your number. This is my two second movie. favorite DC movie. Huh. In all comic book movies, I think this is in the top ten easily, and Wonder Woman's probably around four. Mm-hmm. If that gives you, yeah. I'd have yeah. to write it down to be a little bit more extensive, yeah, yeah. but that's yeah. basically where I'm putting it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I guess in DC movies, it's in my top five for sure. But I mean, my, f- I think it'd probably be like three or four for me with wonder with, um, man of steel being the first one, then wonder woman and Aquaman and Shazam are kind of the me- same for me. I cool. guess. For, yeah. I mean, but yeah, that's mine. I'm actually like right where Jared is, except I think like they're kind of tied. It'll just depend on my mood, whether or not I like Shazam or Wonder Woman better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because if I'm feeling like I am woman, hear me roar, <laughs> I'm going to watch Wonder Woman. Yeah. But if I want something like wholesome and just like all overall good and funny, then I'm going to watch Shazam. And I th- that's a good point because now it's going to start, I guess, being harder to rank these movies. Mm-hmm. 
because they're like a mood ring now because yeah. it's like what yeah. do i feel like watching like oh i really like this movie because it makes me feel empowered or i like watching this movie because of action like, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> in, in a, a superhero movie especially in the dc side just because that's not where i come from as a child or yeah. whatever yeah. i didn't think i'd ever see anything like the wonder woman trench scene yeah you know that's no man's land and yep. the yeah no man's land Iconic. and the yeah the emotions that it evokes in this but the when they all say Shazam together, that moment comes very close. And that mm -hmm. was, re and I have to say for like Aquaman, I think the reason that that it's got some flaws in it that I are harder for me to forgive. And to me, it never has exactly that moment, mm -hmm. but I, I understand mean, this is a very yeah, arbitrary guess, criticism. Yeah. But, yeah. But, so there's so. these, like, <laughs> there's these things that people say, like, is the thing that makes that movie or like the character sure. the superhero is like the superhero now. Like, you have Superman with the first flight. You have Batman with the warehouse scene. Yeah. Wonder Woman with No Man's Land. I think Aquaman, when he comes out of the waterfall, waterfall and the is yeah. Aquaman, I'm like, okay, that's his moment. And then, For like, Shazam, a second done with, with the when he comes in on the animals. Yeah. Yeah. Ahead, yeah. yeah. And, um, and then for Shazam, it's two of them for me. Like, yeah. I'm having trouble picking or I'm just going to wait to see, like, I guess what the general consensus is for yeah. it. But it's when he jumps off the roof and says Shazam I and, love like, flies. that. Cinematically, it's beautiful and it's it, I get, it to me it's like just kind of symbolized like he's just leaving that behind going to his new family type thing yeah and then also when the family all says shazam and they're finally like the shazam family yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. the shazamly <laughs> nice <laughs> just keep <laughs> no, I, mashing words together i think someone else said that one Don't. of them will fit but you did so you meant i hear this a lot you mentioned the third act of wonder woman yeah that you didn't like it you don't like it either right no why I, I, Aries is dumb. It, <laughs> it uh, yeah, and it, it, it from a kind of, from a structural point of view, I actually i I don't think he's as bad as like I, as a matter of fact, I even think there's some cool stuff about like him forming weapons mentally and stuff like that. I think that uh, the whole point was to say it wasn't Aries's fault mm -hmm. that that you know her that what she has to learn as a person to to become less naive is that. That that moment that Chris Pine is like, look, it's not just some evil force. People are just like great. this. Yeah, yeah. And there's a way that I think the Aries thing actually just almost goes back on it. Not totally. Um, I, I I think it was I think it was just making that point go further though, because he even said that like I, I'm not like I kind of like dabbled with like making war and stuff, yeah. and putting people against each other. But he's like, I've been just sitting back now. Yeah. Like they're just going at it. yeah i think it's the difference between saying it's not fundamentally incoherent mm -hmm. it just softens the point mm -hmm. a little bit to have her have that big fight uh but i'm just i'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm only curious because i really liked it like i i guess yeah. i thought about it differently than I, well it's I a really think. overblown criticism i will say like i think people that's it's not my favorite thing and people talk about it as if it's this vitiating problem and i think it's that's just not i guess unsure. i just find it weird too because people say it's the third act but it's like it's like the last 10 minutes of the movie so like i wouldn't even say it's really the last act because you still had ludendorff to you, deal with you're and right and i'm just saying yeah. i just feel like this is how the movie goes right it's like a giant arc it's like yeah start strong woo i'm in the air climax no man's land awesome and then it's like yeah. okay chris pine doing something and then it just falls flat on its face at the end, you know. I think, yeah. I think that's true. I mean, I don't, I don't. Again, I don't think it's. I think it's more like it kind of has a rough landing, yeah, than crashing. But, yeah, but yeah. Um, okay. I was, other, I, I otherwise, was if it was wasn't of... for that, and I think the other thing about it is like what Kayla sort of mentions, it gets so high yeah. that in a and if that was Guardians of the Galaxy two and it had the same level ending, I don't think people would notice. Yeah, exactly. It's just Wonder Woman is such a strong movie that. That was a pretty strong, weak part of yeah. it. Yeah, I guess so that it is really true. Like looking out. at it from that point, it's like, yeah, I love everything about that movie. But that I don't is a mind the end flaw. But yeah, it's yeah. it, and I think just aesthetically too, it does look a little off compared to most of the movie. Yeah, yeah. It, it just took it to me from a hundred to like a ninety-seven. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> Basically, is what happened. Okay, let's sorry. Yeah, yeah. enough with Wonder Woman. Yes. We'll talk about a Wonder movie yeah. comes out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you said you had one last thing. Oh, uh, damn! I can't remember. Oh, oh, here it is. Uh, so there's a thing that I've heard with this movie, which is the to me, uh, I mean, the criticism online to me, which is the last vestige of the troll, which is a basically a logical uh, fallacy, an informal fallacy, and it's important to draw attention to. It's called the argument from personal incredulity, meaning, and that the way it's structured is 
I'm not compelled or convinced, and therefore it's wrong. Mm. So, oh, so uh, like the people that don't have any interest in it. Exactly. Yeah. And it's people who say, well, I just don't think it's that special, or I didn't like it that much. Well, that's not a criticism. And I'm not saying sh- yeah. shut up, but just that's to me like saying like, peanut, or, peanut, peanut butter's bad because <laughs> I don't like the taste of peanut butter. Yeah. And it, I think in a very similar sense here, if you're going to have some sort of criticism and not be understood as a troll, you actually have to have criteria, yeah. some analysis, some comparison. Just to be like, I didn't like it. It's like, well, I'm going to assume that you just like saying you don't like things. Yeah. Not that you have something to say beyond that. Well, I mean, because that doesn't open up a conversation. That's not a debate. That's like, oh, yeah. all right. Yeah. yeah I mean, <laughs> it's I think, somebody shitting on the party is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And it, I do think it's funny because, I mean, Twitter is the bane of all existence. A lot of things. <laughs> uh, have you been to the Facebook comment section? That's like a cesspool. Mm. Did you? <laughs> that is true so all social media <laughs> with things that people like is definitely awful i mean i most of the stuff that i've seen specifically on twitter is people saying like i don't mean to like shit on people's party but i don't give a fuck about shazam yeah. it's like <laughs> what did Ed stark say everything before bud is horseshit yeah like okay <laughs> like what well, i don't so when they say that me being curious i'm like well why why do you say that? Like, what I what do yeah. you not like about the character? I'm genuinely curious. I'm not saying they're wrong, even though they are. But I'm not saying <laughs> yeah. they're wrong. And it's just they're like, well, just tonally and like all this bullshit that's going on. Like, I don't. I'm like, what? Cool. I, what? Like, and they, I, I asked them, have you seen the movie? No. Well, then yeah. you can't say anything. Like, I mean, yeah. I, we can't have a conversation here. Like, I just and it's all of. I might be controversial here, but it's all of those release the Snyder cut bullshit fucking people that Isn't are out there. Crazy. I just I'm done. I'm done with it. It's they're like <laughs> the flat earthers of the superhero world. I just I don't. And by the way, I'm not against the Snyder cut. It's not about yeah, that. It's I just mean, about like ha- having some sort of like I would the love weirdest for form it to of. Come out. People are just so, that's the weirdest form of partisanship that you could possibly have. I thought Marvel versus DC was stupid. Yeah. But to be so like partisan that you're actually like you have some sort of loyalty to a cut of a movie. I mean, uh, yeah. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Ending on um tell us what you think about <laughs> yeah. the movie, please. Yeah. And don't be afraid of our responses cuz I promise to temper them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, go see the movie, guys. Yeah. It's great.